<laughs> Hello all and one and one and all. How you doing? Okay, this is another update for you in regards to our Dragon Age series. So, the situation is the group um, have been having a bit of downtime really from playing the game. And we are, as, as we've said before, you know, declining the thing, the campaign, um, into its end. But we want that to feel organic kind of thing. So, and because we've got a lot of other things to play. If we came back, it would be Inquisition time period. Because that's the time period that Green Ronin is going to support anyway. So, you know, <clears throat> why flog a dead horse? Or in this case, a dead era. Okay, so anyway. So, uh, this is actually a composite of three sessions that I ran with Jess Laurie again. Yes, Laurie's in your module. You know, I'm in your module. Hacking... Hacking your adventure and st stealing all your loot. Yes. Um, we really, yeah, yeah, basically Laurie is the gamer meme. We could put a picture of Laurie up and, and like, I is in your dungeon, stealing all your loot. So the rest of the group. Uh, so yeah, this was Laurie's character Blitzel again. Now, because he's got the Black Bear curse, it basically pushes him... <clears throat> To do more and more ridiculous things. And he's just conquered Death Trap Dungeon. So, he's the tr trial of the champion's champion. He completed The Walk, as it's called. Another fighting fantasy game book, of course. And now this relates to a fighting fantasy game book too. But I had played Death Trap Dungeon before, when we, when we played that. Uh, but it was a lot of years ago. So I just kind of... Came in and had a map to work with a bit. But this time round I did something really stupid. Okay. I took the... The fact that he's a Nivaran. And so he's the... He's a Pentagast bloodline but he's a bastard of the family. And he's trying to prove himself to the rest of the Pentagasts. Anyway. Right. He... Uh, he... It's kind of dragons are in his fate. They're part of his future anyway, whether he can, whether he likes that or not. And yeah, he quite likes that idea. He's got something to prove. <clears throat> so yeah, he did Eye of the Dragon by uh, Ian Livingstone over three sessions. And now, yeah, this is just run with, with Blitzel. Blitzel's a pretty cool character. Polearm wielding... Uh, monster hunter basically he's got his own specialization that we've created just for that and uh, yeah basically the story roughly I mean this won't be able to be a full like recap of what happened because it being one of these game books it's so twisty and turny and there's so much content <laughs> inside the game book and it's trying to remember exactly <clears throat> the order everything happened and everything yeah, and this is a particularly convoluted, complex place. Uh, so, but basically, he meets this guy, gets given poison, agrees to drink it if he gets told where this treasure is. He gets given one of the emerald eyes to this golden dragon. He's got to find the other emerald eye and insert both emerald eyes into the dragon before you can touch it, before you can pick it up. So it's magic. This guy called Henry Delacour has given him the poison and given him the location. And he said he's been in the labyrinth and almost made it, but only found one eye. And here it is. Now you're going to need it. Anyway, in goes Blitzel. And uh, did really well. Did really well. You know, pushing, pushing through and blasting through in his, in his usual manner. The, now, the, what we did here, I didn't have a map to work with. That's the first thing. Okay, and uh, so I encouraged him to map as he went, and I also told him paragraph numbers. So when we'd come to like a junction, and then he decides, oh, well, I'm going to turn left. So I tell him what that number is, left, so he can write that on his map. And the reason for that, the reason you, you as the GM need to do that with your player, if you, especially if you don't have the map, of course, is because if 
if they want to do something out of the realms of the game book, you need to be able to let them because it's a role playing game, not a fighting fantasy game book. You're just insta converting it, you know, as it were. <clears throat> so, uh, what we he you know he wrote those down, and then if he wanted to backtrack for any reason, or if we came upon one of those those um, like. Your adventure ends here, which is way too harsh for a role-playing game. Then, uh, because, you know, it doesn't assume you have multiple goes at it like a game book would. Then you can try to handle that some other way. So you could try to handle that as, like, a massive damage or, like, some sort of test to reduce the damage. If you've done something stupid, uh, some sort of, like, reactionary test or some sort of save, you know. <clears throat> So, um, you know, for in D&D terms, reflex save or what have you. Um, in, in, in Dragon Age terms, it would be dexterity acrobatics, of course. So, uh, yeah, you have to be able to handle those situations and anything else that might happen. So, yeah, anyway, uh, he's pushing through this place. Did quite well. This was a blind run for me. I had never read Eye of the Dragon yeah, I'm GMing it, and I'm also instant converting it. And I, I have to say, I'm quite impressed that at no point throughout did I have to uh, stop and, you know, say, oh, we have to stop the session here so I can manufacture, some, convert something suitable for what this encounter actually is. Uh, I was able to think of things very quickly on the fly. <clears throat> Like, for instance, when, when they meet a gremlin in there, it's not really much of an encounter. But uh, I managed to turn that into a ghast, for example. And the usual, you know, genlocks become goblins. Herlock, um, orcs, um, orcs are herlocks, and so forth, yeah? So, uh, that's fairly easy as well. And there's not really a lot to say about the place, except that it's very, it is very labyrinthine, and it feels like you're really in there for ages, and it's just playing out, and there are, there are so many deceptive, nasty things that can happen to you. But uh, there was a, a fairly confusing one there. He fought some, something called a Gigantus, I think it was, but it, was described and looked more like a sort of rock wraith. So I put him up against an ancient rock wraith. And you know what? The ancient rock wraith they've put in the book is really weak. I mean, I remember when Hawk was fighting that thing, and that was a hell battle. So, you know, if you want one like that, you would really need to epic the hell out of that thing. Uh, there was something in the book called a vermin spawn, so I was expecting like a rat thing. But when, when I looked at the picture of it, it just looked more like a Nurglitch demon, greater demon looking sort of thing. So, made that a a, a demon of sloth. Ah, there it is. The, um, he meets a, a dwarf called um, Little Big. <clears throat> and, you know, teams up with him. So, they became a little partnership. And they had a little tete uh, going on, and oh, what else did we meet in there? There was uh, there was a um, doppelganger. That's right. That basically looks like Little Big, and you have to decide which one to attack. And he'd read a rhyme, so he knew which one to attack. So he attacks the left one, and then he has to fight it. So we made that. That's really weird looking thing. It's like what do you do when you got these really weird looking things? So I made that. You ready for this? A dark spawn emissary abomination. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So it had the fade about it and the taint about it. It was, yeah. Anyway, m pushed on, came to a point of uh, a black dragon. Now, this thing was the mature female dragon, not the high dragon. And I used that from the uh, Esoterica book, the Best Tree Esoterica. <clears throat> which is an unofficial product, but, you know, a lot more properly dangerous things than, than Green Ronin's own ones, to be honest, uh, for for the taste of power level of my group and the, and the, the way they fight. 
and just how strong they are. And, uh, yeah, because every, everyone's level 12 now, by the way. So, anyway. He was just scaling down the wall and decided to jump off the wall. The black bear thing kicked in, diving attack. He's on his back. He's stabbing it, stabbing it, doing his giant killer, sort of monster killer thing. Giant of the Shadow of the Colossus type style. He stab, 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 bringing it down. Finally got brought, um, flicked off. But this thing, you know, didn't have enough health left to, to um, make a match. Little Big was uh, down to 6 HP by the end of the fight, but he even killed the damn dragon. What is wrong with Blitzel? He's completely... N he's nuts. And then you get out of there, you find the golden dragon. Henry Delacour is, of course, a traitor. He shoots Little Big, and and, and um, Little Big says, no, you wait, um, you drink that. But it's like, no, that's a... I think that's just a healing potion sort of thing, whatever. You drink it. So he's saved... Because he got shot with the crossbow by Henry Delacour, and Blitzel killed Delacour, and then, and then, Blitzel gets told eventually, yes, you weren't poisoned at all anyway. It wasn't a fourteen-day slow-acting poison. You're completely fine. They've been duped. But that's Eye of the Dragon done. So the group will have earned another thousand. And the only other thing to tell you really is that with the new Dragon Age core collected rulebook out it suggests a new leveling uh, uh experience yield which would suggest that actually our group are like level 17 now and i might decide to pump them up a bit to that so if i do that they're probably going to be gaining a level per session so that would be intense but not so bad given the fact that there isn't really much content left for them so anyway just a real quick update there that Blitzel's completed Eye of the Dragon and he's a complete madman and he's bought his own ship with the money and he's become a captain and he's got a crew of his whole ship now. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.